Cool. Okay. Um, that's great. I want to make sure everyone gets in intro. So Chelsea, um, we're going to jump on, we're going to just segue. You, j you just said time and commitment and that sort of thing. And um, a podcast does take multiple hours a week to produce. And um, branding and identity, Chelsea and Jeffrey both uh, talked on that. And I'd like you to maybe jump in and tell us about how long does it take to build an identity? How long does it take to, to build a brand? Can I do it overnight? Can I do it tonight? <laughs> <laughs> no, but everyone wants to. <laughs> um, I am a new marketing company. I have to say that um, as my client base grows, I've learned that everyone wants something in four days. Um, and it, it can happen because I'm making it happen, but um, if you want quality and you want to make sure that this is the right thing for you, then you know if you want a logo, give your designer two weeks to really do some some good market research and um, just don't rush things like that because you're only going to come up with half of the quality of work that you would. Mm -hmm. So, Jeffrey, would you agree with that? I agree with that. I agree with it um, in many levels. Um, basically what the thing is, like, kind of touching on that, going a little bit deeper, uh, I've designed logos that been amazing for companies in five minutes, and then there's logos that take you four months. Um, one thing that I talk, try to talk a lot to, especially universal brands, and even the way the product goes, um, is I like to get to know the owners and the people of the company, because people always put their personal love, and if they really like the product, and we're not talking about people that work at McDonald's and don't want to be there, it's people that have careers and actually love the product that they're building, you want to put them in the product. So you want to get to know them and you kind of convey that in the aesthetic values, even everything else. Um, and I think that's really key with any, any good design, you know, and that's one thing like the big spec work and stuff like that. Can you I, explain spec work for people? Basically spec work and bid work is companies, they'll throw out, ask for quotes from different designers and stuff like that and they want the lowest, you know, they want the lowest price and they want you to design something for them. And it actually devalues the, the aesthetic value as a marketing technique. Sure, you can make it look pretty, but is it going to work right? Is it going to fit your, you know, your user base, your consumers? Um, I think that's a key thing, and I'm one of the advocates to go against spec work in the sense is I want to get to know the people. I want to know you. Granted, there's certain big brands that you can do spec work for, like Nike and stuff like that, because they have are so saturated and they're pushing out so much stuff about themselves. You can learn a lot, but little companies... Learn your designer. Get to know his portfolio. Don't ask for money. Should be the last thing you talk about. And if it's a good designer, they're gonna like. You have to understand that they have to make a living at it too. Um, but the key is you want to find someone that fits you. And if they fit you right and they really enjoy your product, they're gonna lower their price if they know you can't pay it. Um, that's one thing that a lot of people it just kind of falls off. Oh, I can do this. I can do this. And like even big companies, like there's a couple, there's one big company I work for, they're an amazing company, they have amazing product, but the key thing is they, their brand recognition isn't there. Their salespeople, their UI people, everyone has a different view of the way their company looks and they don't have this universal look at uh, what, um, what their product, what their product conveys. You know what I mean? Because everyone's showing it in a different aspect and it actually devalues their company. Okay, so I'm going to jump in really quick. Did, did most of you get a chance to see Stuff in My Beard, the website? Okay. So my question for Jeffrey, um, you know, is why do people love beards? Like, why do people love your site? In other words, how do you create, help create a passionate community around, like, facial hair, you know? Um, I didn't create the community. Uh, the community was already there. It's nature's bit. You know, it's the best <laughs> thing. Like, it's the best thing to keep, uh, you know, if you're hungry later, you pick some out of your beard and you can eat it. It's awesome. It's, I've it's, had a beard longer than he's been alive. <laughs> yeah, see, this is, this is I wisdom. Have 38 here. years without shaving off my beard. My wisdom. kids would not recognize me. Wisdom, see? And, um, I don't know, beards, they're definitely starting to get big again. Literally big again. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It was something I, I started as a. And I'm a never fun hungry. Fun. What's that? Yeah, you're never you're hungry. Never hungry. Well, and it keeps you warm. There is scientific data that the scientist shaved the side of his face off, and he was warmer and everything like that. So there, there's, there's definitely value to it. That's why mountain men have beards. But uh, it was just a fun thing. Like uh, basically, even even the female pharaohs wore beards. Uh, yeah. And, and ladies like beards. I, 
think you know it. Ladies like beards. Okay, before this veers too far off, yeah. off topic here, um, uh, uh, Forrest, uh, hi Forrest, oh. all the way, I'm not forgetting about you down here. Um, you're responsible for the gorgeously designed uh, conscious bookkeeping site, which I think a lot of you saw on that 50 inch uh, screen that Forrest brought in. Um, so what difference has beautiful design and functionality made for the conscious bookkeeping site specifically? Well, there's a beautiful design and usability go hand in hand, and I, I don't like to separate the two. You have a really great looking site, but users can't find what they're looking for easily. If they come to your site and they have to think to figure out what your site is about, then you're going to lose them. Your bounce rate is going to be 50, 60 percent. A bounce rate is basically people who come to your homepage and leave and never get any further than your homepage. You want to try to drive that number, that percentage down as low as possible because then people start to click through and find other um, information on your site. People make up their mind about the credibility of a website within under half a second of coming to it for the first time. There's tons of usability research done on this. Video cameras rolling with groups of people going to new websites they've never seen before. And they speak out loud as they're going through the site and they, they say what they're thinking. And they look at the website and they're like, yeah, I noticed a bug here and the colors are really kind of ugly. I can't really find what this site's about. And they're gone. They've been on the site for five seconds. If the site has a collection of a certain amount of design elements where you see it, the colors hit you in a certain way, it creates a feeling when you're on the site. Everything is clean. There's no bugs. Things are laid out super easy. There's an attention to negative space so that everything's not crammed and you're not visually assaulting people with ads and moving things to that um, grab your eye that you cannot not look at because they're so uh, attractive to our neurological structure that you're like, what is that? You know, and they know that, so they they build that into those ads. If you take those off of there. And you've got uh, you know, the main menu laid out in a particular way that's very easy to find, like what's the structure of the site, what's going on here, right up front is the copy telling me in one sentence or two sentences what is the essence of this website. If you've got a number of those things in place and you're using conventions in web design, you're going to hang on to people a lot longer and have a higher conversion rate to people signing up for your services, your seminars, your workshops, whatever it is that you're offering your product. So. Does that kind of get at what you're looking yeah, at? Yeah, definitely. That was well said. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I'd like to intro uh, Joel, and uh, the question for Joel is, how does development fit into this, what we've just heard, and how, how important is it? Like, you can have a pretty website if, you know, does it really matter if it's, uh, if the development is, uh, if the back end code really looks good? Nobody's going to see it, right? Yeah. Um, well, you could go a number of different directions with that. Uh, I'm, I'm a software engineer, so I, I personally care a lot about how um, the back end of a website looks like, like what the code is like, and um, I, I personally like really elegant systems. Um, I, I think that if you do have spaghetti code in the back ends, um, it's not going to be that big of an issue unless you want to actually extend the features of the website. Um, if you actually want to be able to maintain it and extend it, then it will it will you know, be a good thing to have well-architected code. So um, uh, does that answer your question? And um, I, I guess I would kind of, the next question, the follow-up to that is, what, is, what does that look like? What, do you need to hire a developer, or can you use WordPress? Casey was demonstrating WordPress. Forrest was demonstrating Joomla. Like, is that good enough? Like, is open source code good enough? Or what's your take on that? Um, I mean, I think it depends on what you're trying to do. Um, if you're trying to do something that a lot of people have done in, you know, in, in content management systems or blogs or something like that, then using WordPress or movable type or something like that is probably the way to go. Um, there's no sense in rewriting all of that, mm -hmm. that code. Um, and there's honestly lots of great plugins for those systems as well that let you do pretty much anything you might want to do to add on to you know, WordPress blog, for instance. You know, you in your Flickr photos, or you can pull in your delicious bookmarks, or whatever you want to do. So, no more image maps. No more image maps. No, I mean if you want screenshot, to. Screenshot, <laughs> just JPEG screenshots. Iframes are coming back. Okay, 